Hey everyone, it's Jeff from Programmer vs. World and CodeAffectionado.com and today we're going to set up a JSP development environment inside BND Tools. So let's get started on that. On the bottom of this video, in the description and on CodeAffectionado.com, I'm going to give you guys a link to download this zip. Now what this zip is, it's basically just a collection of all the dependencies needed to do a PAX Web JSP recipe in BND Tools. And if you download it to your machine and explode it, what you'll see is it's basically a collection of some PAX web DLLs and all their dependencies. Now we're not going to use everything in here. Some of it was just included for later tutorials that we may do, but we're going to get JSP running off of this zip file and we're going to need to move these jars into our repository. And before we do that, let's open up Eclipse. Now I'm just going to start a blank or a new BND tools project on a blank workspace. So we'll call this, I don't know, let's call it JSP test. And I'm just going to accept the defaults all the way through. And when it asks to build a configuration project, I'm going to go ahead and choose the bundle hub one. Now if we look inside the JSP test folder for our project, we'll notice that they gave us an existing launch descriptor to launch the framework. We're not going to use that one. Instead, we're going to create a new one on our own. So let's go up to File New and say Run Descriptor, and I'm going to call this one JSP Pax Web. And I'm going to leave it Apache Felix 4 with the GoGo shell. Now, mine defaulted to 1.7, and I have 1.8 on my machine, and it really shouldn't matter, but I'm going to go with the current version just to be politically correct here. And we'll hit Save on that. Now, what we really need to do is get some bundles into our local repository to work with here because BND Tools Hub is not going to give us everything that we need. So if we go back to that original zip file that we opened up and we highlight every single guy on here and just drag them over to local, we'll notice we get this pop-up that ask us to uh, go ahead and add all these files to the repository. Make sure they're all got check marks on them. They should all be okay and just hit finish. Now what you'll see is local has a whole bunch of files on the inside of it. However, you still may have a problem in which when you're trying to filter up here on them, nothing actually will show up. And to get them to show up, all you really have to do is restart the workspace. Now that it's back open, if you look at just local, you'll see that all the files from our original zip are in there. And for right now, we're going to operate off local, or I'm sorry, that was BND Tools Hub. There's our local. So right now, I'm going to operate off both BND Tools Hub and local because there is some jar files in BND Tools Hub that we're going to need that I didn't provide with local just so the zip file wouldn't be that large. So if we minimize our run requirements and open up our run bundles, well, actually, we can go ahead and run this real fast just to make sure everything's up to speed. And we we'll type the LB command down there in that window and we can see everything's looking just fine. If you remember from a previous tutorial, we won't get very far installing the web console or any type of web framework unless we go ahead and snap in event admin and config admin. So let's go ahead and drag those over here. Now remember, if you can't see one or the other, it's probably because one of these check marks up here haven't been checked. Notice we're getting config admin from BND Tools Hub, and we're getting event admin from the local directory. Once you have those two snapped in, it's time to go ahead and put Java X servlet in. This one's required for any web stuff you're going to do. And it's helpful to go ahead and find the HTTP API and put it in. We'll go ahead and hit save there just because this is a good stopping point. And do an LB and make sure everything's started up and everything's good. Now that that's in there, we have some prerequisites to getting Jetty to run inside of PaxWeb that we need to work on. The first thing we need to do is we need to put in ObjectWeb's ASM bundle. Then we need to go in and type SLF and look for both the API and the simple. Now here's a case where I gave you one in local, but it's already in the BND Tools Hub. It's okay, we can just use the BND Tools Hub one and snap that in. Okay, the next thing we need to work on is getting the XBean binaries locked into place here. So we'll type XBean. You'll notice there's two. There's a bundle util and a finder, and they both need to come over there as well. Now we can hit save. Now we have all the necessary prerequisites to go ahead and start up Jetty. And there's a trick to this, actually. If you look in our bundles that we unzipped and you look for Jetty, you'll see two. One says Jetty Bundle, 
and one says jetty and is a bundle okay so this is the jetty bundle this is the jetty bundle bundle <laughs> we're going to use the jetty bundle bundle because it actually has jetty bundled in with it i know that's a lot of bundles let's go ahead and drag that in there and hit save we'll see that the web server starts up on port 8080 right away but we're not going to do anything with it just yet let's go ahead and find the web console that we have in local not this one down here in the bnd tools hub we want the all-in-one jar from local snap it in hit the save button and we should see it start up so let's go into chrome here open up localhost system console and bang there it is now of course just like any other console i've been logged in before while i'm doing these tutorials but you'll probably get prompted with something that looks like this if you just type in admin admin whoops and actually spell it correctly it'll let you right in so we'll use this as a verification from now on that everything is snapping in correctly. So, so far we notice we have the web console, we have, a jetty, we have a jetty bundle running. We really don't have the ability to process JSPs yet, but we got a little few more dependencies that we need to add before we can make that happen. Probably the most important thing that we need is a compiler. And included in the zip that's on local is the Eclipse JDT core compiler. We're gonna go ahead and snap that one in now. And we'll hit the save button and just for fun let's go over here and refresh our bundles and we can see that all this stuff's going in we can also see we're using 3.10.0 we're in good shape right now we're also going to need to snap in pax's logging api jsp is uh really verbose in its logging and it also uses this api a lot which is a very handy thing for troubleshooting some of your jsps that may not work later so let's go ahead and snap it in and now we should just be able to just look at what's left in our local bundles. Actually, let's leave both of them on for right now. And I'll just type packs. So we'll try go ahead and try to snap the JSP bundle in now. And we've get a org, org Apache Julie logging error. And that's because we missed the logging API. I told you to actually drag it in, but instead I dragged in the web API. That's my mistake. We'll leave them both in there for now. So we'll go ahead and drag the logging API. And you'll see now that some logs actually went ahead and started logging as soon as we did that. And if we come back in here, the JSP support should be able to be started now, and it is. So now that that's done let's go ahead and add our http whiteboard and let's the war extender now the war extender we won't use in this tutorial and probably ever to be honest with you but it's a very clever thing if you want to just create your own war file and deploy it to felix as long as it's a jsp standard web application this little war file will help explode it and actually make it run inside the felix container it's pretty handy so we'll hit save on that and come back and look at felix now and we look like we're in pretty good shape we have everything that we need and just for fun, let's make sure we have our tag libraries installed. In order to get those, we need to make sure we have the JSTL API installed. And other than that, we seem to be in good shape. I'm just gonna go back into my local bundles and look one more time since I am doing this from memory. And it looks like we have just about everything we need. It wouldn't hurt to go ahead and drag the Felix logging API in there. And what that'll do is that'll start up the log service so that if we get something absolutely critical, we can come in here and, and see if a bundle started or stopped or whatever, and we won't have to rely so much off of uh, the console. And this looks to be it. It looks like we're in good shape here. We can go ahead and start developing an app. What we really need to do now is test what we have by creating a JSP file and that'll start part two of what we're doing but first let's get the pax web thing out of the way here jsp pax web i want you to go away i'm going to click on local bnd tools release and workspace hit save and i'm just going to close you for right now i just don't want it up there confusing things okay so by default our project gave us one little example namespace with an example component in it and we really don't need that and by default it's building jsp test.jar from this bnd file right here so let's go ahead and go file new and create a new bundle descriptor and in this case we'll call this jsp demo this is going to be the actual bundle that's holding our jsp source files and it's actually our web application for 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 as far as we're concerned for this tutorial 
We don't need to do a whole lot in here. You'll notice right off the bat, it gave us a private package. We'll take this out in a minute because we want to trick this in the building. If you'll notice now, there's a JSP demo.jar file in here. But if we look on the inside of it, the manifest is not going to be 100% correct for hosting a web app. So let's go ahead and create a directory to put our JSP files in. We're just going to say file new folder. We'll call this web app. And inside web app, we'll, uh, well, let's create a new folder inside there. We'll call this web-inf. This is where our web XML will go. And then right here inside this folder, let's say file new file. Um, let's create a test.jsp file. Now, a little bit different editor is going to open for me. I don't do uh, my HTML editing in Eclipse. But if you bear with me here, we'll just create a very simple HTML file for right now. We'll add the tags and stuff in later. We'll give it a little title, grab my mouse back here. And in the body, we'll just put something like, uh, let's just put an H1 in and say, wow, I can't type. All right, and we'll just hit save on that. And now we have a test.jsp file on the inside of it. You may want to know if we need a web XML in there. I don't think so. If for some reason this doesn't work, we'll add it. A lot of people do because it's just nice to go ahead and add um, you know, some information on the inside of it that may get picked up later when someone looks at it, but we're not going to need it. So now what we need is we need this to be represented inside the bundle basically as our web application. So to do that, we're going to need to hack the source file a little bit. There's a lot of nice editors for this, but there's not one actually to allow you to do what we're about to do. And we need to add three things. First of all, we need to add a web context path. And this is going to be the path of the web app on the server. Um, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and give a web app context as well. Different types of server configurations use different ones for different reasons. So it's handy to have both there. And then we're just going to go dash web, right? And we're going to use our web app directory. And that should be all we really have to do. Now, if we come back and we look at what was generated inside here, we'll notice our test JSP is inside our bundle now. We'll also notice that web INF classes has has been changed and that's where this example component is now. So it's basically converted this to be a web application, but still be bundle capable. And that's what web means, web application bundle. So we're in good shape to deploy right now. I don't think there's anything extra. Let's double check our manifest just to be sure. And yes, we have both a context path, a context path and a web app context. I'm sorry, I can't speak today. So let's deploy this thing. So if we go back to our original JSP PAX web file here, and we go into our running bundles, we'll now see that our demo is here. If your demo is not up top, it's because workspace is not checked here. It's the only reason it's not visible. So what we really need to do is go ahead and drag our JSP test over. but. Before we do that, let's go back over to it and actually remove this private package declaration. I had, I had this actually cause a problem in a previous release here. So now that that's removed and everything should be good to go here, we should be able to drag that over and hit save on it. When we do, we'll see, we'll get messages like this that we just registered a demo with the context name test me. Okay. Let's refresh over here and make sure this is active. And now if we go to localhost, um, what is it? 8080 test me test.jsp, we should actually get our message inside of here. So we saw that our website worked. It just didn't do anything really interesting there. Um, let's go ahead and add some code to it to validate that some of the JSP features are actually there. One of the things we need to check for to see if we can do uh, expressions. So let's say this section worked with Go ahead and save that and wait for it to trigger a comp compilation. I didn't actually see it. Sometimes I have to open it twice. There it goes. 
And if we refresh, now we can see that that actually worked. Okay, so let's try to add some tags to it and see what happens. Let's go over here, open up the file. I already have it on the clipboard because I can't remember the thing to save my life. There we go, so now we have the, uh, the tag lib registered there. I didn't see the comp compiler go off, but it'll, it will here in a second. There it goes. Um, that's all because I'm using an external editor. If you're not using an external editor like me, your compilation will get triggered each time you hit save. But let's hit the button. Now if we look, we get this message that says, hey, um, the core JSTL can't get resolved in either the XML or the jar files and deployed with this app. And it's a very common problem when we're first starting out. And what it is, is that we don't have a specific import that tells our bundle to import that and look for it inside the class space of Apache Felix. It's there. We're just not importing it. So what we need to do is I'm going to cheat and go over here and grab this off an existing file that I already have working. And we're going to go into the custom import section of our demo file. And you remember that's our actual bundle descriptor. Hit the plus button over here. And in the pattern, actually just paste that right in. Now if we hit save, you'll notice it triggers the compilation again. This time, we'll actually get our original message back. Now we're not doing anything with the tag yet, so let's do something with that. I'm sorry, I opened that. I have no idea why that jumped up. All right, so let's go ahead. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll set a var called test var value equal um, JSTL tag libs, All right? And down here underneath our expression statement, we'll add another one. We'll add an H3 and say that this section, hey, there's a typo in there. You guys didn't say anything about that. Worked with um, test var. What am I typing here? Oh, I guess I shouldn't fight you, Sublime. You're correct. I'm sorry. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and close that. I noticed the compile didn't trigger, so I'll open it again and close it real fast. That usually causes it. And then we'll refresh. And now we have it working with JSTL tag lib. So now this is a pretty good place to stop because in future tutorials, I'm sure we'll do some more stuff like add servlets and a few other things. And I'll even show you some tricks for how to mix JS JSPs and HTMLs inside of a specific file. But for now, have fun. Enjoy creating JSPs inside Apache Felix. I'm Jeff and from Code Affectionado and Programmer vs. World. You have